gentlemen it is early morning yes we are just fixing to leave the truck stop up here now in South Center Minnesota that's right we are going to make a right this time usually we make a left and go back onto the interstate but uh, Hey, today we are taking the 71 South for a little while. We put a little bit of fuel in there because I wasn't sure where exactly I was going to be able to fuel next. So yeah, let's get on down the road here and let's have ourselves a fantastic day. Well, here we are coming into a small town of Hector. Hector, H E C T O R. Minnesota, that is. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we're just cruising along here on Highway 4 in Minnesota. That's right. The guy from uh, this company that I'm supposed to deliver to just called me back now this morning. And he said, yeah, we did get a message there from dispatch that I'm running a little late, so, uh, but he said, yeah, no, we're, uh, we're not that busy there at the place, he said, but uh, he said, you can come in anytime. He said, it doesn't sound like it was gonna be uh, a big deal, you know? So, so, so I said to him, I said, well, I uh, didn't think I was gonna make my appointment time, but then, uh, some reason I guess I under uh, I overestimated it or something and uh, looks like I'll be able to get there right around nine o'clock or just after nine o'clock right now I mean depending on how much more towns I gotta go through and stop signs and all that but uh, other than that I uh, I'm looking at it right now the way it looks like I only got 107 miles to go and it's uh, exactly seven o'clock right now just making sure nobody is coming so i can cross this road you know here we go now we continue on with our journey i had to cut the camera there because i was uh having to pay attention to what i was doing there so we cut the camera off of there and Figured we uh, would look at the road and see what we are looking at, right? You don't want to get yourself into trouble sometimes, you know? But yeah, as I was saying, I talked to the customer and it sounds like it doesn't matter what time I come in. Uh, they'll take me in any time. So we'll try and make our goal is to be there for 9 o'clock, but... I know that's going to be a little tight, but uh, looks like we should be there right around 9 or just try at 9 o'clock. I should be there. But uh, yeah. Nice open fields up here. All the snow is already gone. Yeah. That's right. We'll see what kind of reload we'll get, but. Uh, I'm happy that the snow is starting to disappear, that's for sure. There was a little bit drizzle there this morning earlier, but uh, now that has disappeared as well. So we should be all right. Only problem is we gotta go back north, right? Could get colder again, we could have ice crystals again. Well, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping I'll get a quick reload out of here and then, uh, 
hopefully they'll unload me real quick too and get me a reload real quick and I could be on my way back home you know that would be fantastic that would be absolutely fantastic oh yeah yeah, we are on the back roads of Minnesota. That's right. I was a little bit worried there about the uh, weight uh, road restrictions there because of spring restrictions. And I thought I seen some kind of sign there earlier and that's why I cut the camera. I wanted to see if that was the case or not. I wasn't sure if it was meant for this road or not. So, But I do see other trucks coming through here so must not be restricted otherwise trucks wouldn't be traveling on there all day long there's a couple of trucks ahead of me and i'm meeting other trucks so i'm thinking it must have been for that other road that was crossing the, from where i was going to cross you know i'm guessing that's where it was for so i don't know for sure but that's what i'm thinking because otherwise uh, these other trucks wouldn't be on here either if it was a restricted road but yeah, you gotta be careful at this time of the year because the restrictions have officially started. I saw a sign there at dispatch office already that they uh, were saying that uh, Manitoba and North Dakota road restrictions have already started. So I don't know if Minnesota or when they start their road restrictions for spring restrictions. So I just want to make sure I don't get myself into trouble or get me a big fine. That's the last thing I need right now. Yeah, that's right. But we'll continue on with our journey here and uh, hope for the best for today. Guess what, guys? Just after I was finished telling you guys about the restriction, uh, having to be careful and all of that, I guess that other uh, sign was uh, designed for warning us that coming up it was restricted. Because uh, I was talking to the uh, local uh, truck drivers up there, finally got a hold of them, and they said, yeah, right that town that I was coming into, it was called uh, Slippy Eye or something like that, Minnesota. From there on further south, the Highway 4 was restricted to 7 tons. So I had to take a left and go up this Highway 14 towards Highway 15 and then go south on that. They said that road is not restricted, so uh, there was no signs there either, so we're good to go this way, but we couldn't continue on Highway 4. That one is restricted right now. So, yeah, we gotta be really careful this time of the year, so that's what I was trying to say earlier, you know, like you gotta really pay attention to these signs, and sometimes they're really small signs, you know, and, miss them you know you're trying to pay attention to the intersection and you gotta watch all these signs and all that so sometimes you can miss them you know and then you can get yourself in trouble I didn't want to do that so uh, luckily I was okay up to that town but now we couldn't go further so we got to take an alternate route but this will actually bring us further east anyways and we got to go a little bit east anyhow then the roundabout take the first to, exit uh, one mile to go to our delivery place so uh so we'll be okay as long as these roads are not restricted we'll be okay right <laughs> yeah Alrighty, everybody we have now officially gotten unloaded yeah and it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon already yeah and good thing is about 2.7 miles ahead. away from here there is a little truck stop so we are making our way over there right now. We still don't have no reload as of yet. They said they are still searching for a reload. They said check back after one o'clock. So I guess we're just gonna go to the truck stop. And wait, I guess till one o'clock. If we don't hear anything back, I guess they're gonna send us back empty. I don't know, what else? <laughs> I don't know what else they could do. I mean, if they can't find a load, they can't find a load, right? And they knew that I needed to be back for tomorrow, so... Uh, yeah, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed and see, I guess. But, 
Yeah, I'm gonna go through this little town up here. I came in this way and delivered it over there, and now we're going that way, and we're still going east, basically, and then uh, going up here to this little truck stop. It's supposed to fit Speed 10 trucks. Just ahead. 10 trucks it's supposed to fit. Yeah. So let's see if we can find it. I was speaking with uh, somebody uh, earlier, with a subscriber of mine, and they said they got something I should get a picture of over here by the Walmart. But I don't know what it is exactly, but we're gonna go and see if we're close by the Walmart there. See if we can get a couple of pictures of it or, or whatever, and uh, I guess we'll go from there. Uh, we're only like 1.3 miles away from there. Yeah, 169. And they live just north of here, or I don't know how far, maybe about in 45 minutes north of here. And unfortunately, they didn't have time to meet up with me today, but. Uh, At the roundabout, take I don't the know third what exit. That truck is trying to do, but uh, he's waiting on somebody. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna make this roundabout up here, and then uh, we've got the only about take the second exit in the half mile. Oh, another roundabout up here. Oh wow, they must have a lot of roundabouts up here. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been in this town before, so I don't know what we can all expect up here. I don't even know if there for sure is a truck stop up there or not. Uh, maybe that's what he was talking about. There's that green man up there. I don't know if that's what he's talking about or not. He said it was right there by Walmart. I wish I could park in there and go in there and grab me a couple of pictures of it. It's like a green man. I don't know what that is. At the roundabout, take the second exit. That must be what he was talking about. I'm pretty sure. I am pretty sure that that's what he was talking about. Because he said it was right here by the Walmart, so that's where it is. But we gotta go find this truck stop. That'd be a good distance to walk. If I wanted to walk over there and check it out, but uh, first we Vehicle gotta find this truck Turn stop. Left on. It's supposed to Giant be right drive. there by that Better. shell. Approaching destination on the right side in 400 feet. Okay. Well, there's a pizza hut across the street in up there. Feet. Turn left on. Giant Drive, and then approaching yeah. destination on the right side in 400 I feet. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be a truck stop or not, but we got plenty of parking in there, so we're going to go park in there, I suppose. Oh yeah, they do have a truck sign up there, it says trucks over there, so I guess, yeah, I guess we can park in there. Yeah, so we can walk along the side of the road here and we could go get us a Approaching few destination in 200 feet on the right side. Yeah, I might take my camera over there and since we, we got nothing to do anyways. On the right side, Blue Earth Auto and Truck yeah, Stop. Yeah, not much going on up here and there's a subway down there so I could even walk over there and get me a subway sandwich. Yeah, that sounds good to me. So I guess we'll be back in a little while. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I told you guys that I had a subscriber of mine telling me about this big green giant up here. Uh, well, I didn't tell you exactly what it was, but here it is. Yeah, so let's see why the big guy. Okay, you guys can read for yourself. I'm hoping you'll be able to see the whole spiel. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a distance. Oh, it looks like you can... Uh, Look in there yet too, eh? That's almost what it looks like, yeah. So there is some kind of story behind the uh, green giant up here. Total cost was $43,000 to manufacture it. 
So that's uh, go up here and that's actually look at the uh, uh, green giant up here. So let's take a look. I know my battery is starting to flash here that it's almost dead, but we're uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. Hopefully my battery will last long enough to uh, videotape it. But yeah, this is the green giant. Oh, that's a big, <laughs> big man. Look at that. Whoa. They got some stuff marked on here. August 22nd, 1979. Something about the uh, history of it. Yeah. So let's go up here and see if we can uh, look through this. Yeah. I should have brought my other battery. I didn't know my battery was this close to being dying up here, but uh, Oh, look at that. They actually have some lights up there too, so they can... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Looking right between, between his legs, right? But, uh, yeah, I got that lady up there in the fort. She's looking at me like, what in the heck is this guy doing, right? But, yeah. Uh, so, thanks to Larry for uh, telling me about the giant up here. And uh, we'll see if we got it on YouTube. Yeah, hopefully you guys will like it. I do. I do like seeing all kinds of statues and stuff like that. So it's always cool. It's a little bit windy out here and I do not have the dead cat on my mic here, but I just have that black foam around it. So I'm gonna see how that black foam performs for me without the uh, dead cat on me. It's not super, super windy, but uh, I guarantee you with just a GoPro, you would have probably heard it by now. So let's cut it for now and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Here we go ladies and gentlemen, we have now been basically told I can start heading towards Fargo. They don't uh, apparently have any re reloads out of this area, which I was told already by Larry Summers, he said there's pretty much nothing around this area, so uh, <clears throat> I'm okay with that. Especially right now, the looking good, okay with the with the temperature and with the weather and everything and all that stuff. On this road for 36 miles. Okay. RJ is telling me to go north here, so let's check it out. Well, it looked like RJ was telling me to go a different way than I wanted to go, so uh, we ended up uh, deciding to go along I-90 anyways. We'll go back the same route as where we came down here. Is, uh, that's about the closest route we can take right now. And since we are empty, I can... I could even go Highway 4, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go up here to uh, Highway 15 and take that across over there the way we did it before and go back up to 4 or whatever. Yeah, so I don't know why it wanted me to go 169 north, but uh, no, we're going to go this way the way I came, so uh, I just had to figure things out before I continue on, you know. But anyways, it looks like it's almost sunshine, but not quite, you know. But uh, yeah, we got about 310 miles to go up to Fargo, and I already did my math there on the uh, on the logbook there. I can just perfectly make it up to Fargo for tonight. That's as far as I can go. I can't go no further than that. So, I'm hoping they ain't gonna plan me a uh, load out of there tonight because that way I I can't take it home tonight, that's for sure. Because they do have a terminal out, out of Fargo there, so sometimes they'll make us go over there and pick up a load there and then come home from there. But uh, yeah, I told them, I said, I know you guys are really working hard at trying to find me alone I know it's not always easy I actually did say that to dispatch and uh, 
I just reminded him kindly, you know, I said, I know you guys are trying to find the load, but it's not always easy, and I said, I, I understand that. Uh, I just really hope that I could uh, get home for tomorrow, because I have a program tomorrow at uh, tomorrow at night, you know, for 7 o'clock, and I told him I needed to be back by 4, so that way I can drop my trailer, do my paperwork, take a shower, and get ready, you know. So then right away, as soon as I sent that message, I mean, within two minutes, I had a message back saying, uh, head to Fargo. So that goes to show you that they do really work hard for, for their uh, drivers, you know. Sometimes it may not feel like it, and I have complained in the past too, you know. But uh, they really do. It just goes to show you, like, if you let them know in advance that you want to go home or or you want to do something or whatever it just seems like they really do try their very best to make it happen you know I'm very impressed with that yeah I did you know spend probably about two hours sitting up here waiting for them to give me an answer but uh, hey that gave me time to relax a little bit Go over there, take the video with the uh, giant green uh, jolly or whatever they call it statue up there. That gave me time to go have something to eat. I was going to go up there to Subway, but then I saw the uh, country uh, side restaurant or whatever they call it, a country restaurant up there, and I figured yeah, I'll go in there and have me a bite to eat there. So, so we did do that. And here we are, now we're making our way down to Fargo. Let's put the hammer down and let's get down over there. Well guys, sometimes things change. So our plans have changed a little bit. Yeah, so we uh, started heading towards Fargo and then all of a sudden they sent us a uh, satellite message saying that uh, go to Rosewa and pick up a load over there. Rosewa, Minnesota that is which is very close to uh, to the border to Canada so yeah so we have to uh, we have to go over there now we are on uh, US Highway 10 making our way to Rosewa we got another 273 miles to go yet although we won't make it there today we'll probably drive another hour or so and then we'll be done for today yeah we cannot go any further than that that's it that's as far as we can go we'll pretty much be uh, with our 14 hour limit not quite but very close to it so uh, that's it we'll be stopping there and hopefully we can get us a parking spot as you can see it started drizzling here again but at least it's not bad you know but anyways, figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an update on uh, what's happening. Well guys, we have made it up to Motelli or something like that, Minnesota. Yeah, it's up here by, uh, well, what was it again? I think by 212 and uh, US 10. I have a US 10 and 212 or something like that at the corner there. <clears throat> and uh, we are done for today we ran almost out of 14 hours I think we had half an hour left on the logbook but that was it and I was gonna go get me a shower in here it's a fairly decent sized truck stop but apparently in there they don't have showers they do have a showers across the street here at the other building but they close at 6 30 and I got here quarter to seven <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't do me any good and they only open at 7 in the morning again so I couldn't even get a shower today so that's one bad part about running back roads a lot of these little truck stops they don't have showers I hate it I'm, well I don't really hate it hate it but I like to take a shower every at least every other day you know I don't always do it every day but at least every other day I like to take a shower and Reddy didn't have a shower yesterday, so today was pretty much a must for me, but 
since I've been running back roads, all these little places I've been stopped at, they didn't have showers. So, uh, fortunately, we weren't able to get a shower today. So we, you, you know, I'll put it this way. You guys don't want to be around me today <laughs> or tomorrow. Uh, be smelling like crazy. But from here, there is really even less than what we had up to here. I mean, we're going further north from here. And there's pretty much nothing here. So, uh. Yeah, we're pretty much out of luck with getting a shower before we get home. Yeah, that kind of sucks, but what can you do, man? I mean, it's just the way it goes. The way it goes. Oh, well. Anyways, we had ourselves a fantastic day, I think. We did okay with miles. Not the greatest, but, uh, I mean, my 14-hour ran out, so, or pretty much, so, uh, I would have gone further, but there is no truck stop here until I think my GPS says uh, the next truck stop available was 100 miles from here. So, yeah, I couldn't do that because I only had half an hour left on the logbook. So I would need it at least an hour and three quarters, especially running these back roads here, uh, maybe even two hours. Especially if there are small towns in there, you got to slow down and all that. So, but anyways, we're going to go to bed here very soon. And then we'll get up early again tomorrow morning and start heading over there. We got 215 miles about to go for tomorrow till we get to uh, Roseau. And then uh, we'll pick up our preloaded trailer. I think that's the way it goes up there. And then we'll see where we'll be crossing the border at. But anyways, thanks for watching my today's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me a fat thumbs up if you did. Share the video and hit that subscribe button right there on that corner over there if you like the video so with that being said have a good one we'll catch you tomorrow we'll be back again at it tomorrow <laughs>